got the question to. I want to ask you, Belly, is so you've done your degree. When did you know, which I think we're going to get to then, that you wanted to do a PhD after this flopping yeah. of A levels? And then we've had this mindset change of, right, I've got to attend, yeah, I've yeah. got to work. Right, Why did so you want to do a PhD and how, when did you know you wanted to do one? So, when I finished my undergrad, I kind of, so as I said, you know, people like say they're good at shit. Yeah. So I graduated first class, top of the class, my undergrad year. So I was like, right, I'm quite good at this academic thing, right? So I thought, right, I'll try for a, try for a master's. Um, this at the end of third year. This was the end of third year. So, so yeah, just Ryan underplayed that there a lot. Ryan got the top grade in his class, no, in his year. Sorry, no one got as high as Belly. In, in his year is that the highest score ever at John Moore's in that degree one of them it's second, of, second or third I yeah think. so basically he topped the fucking year <laughs> I mean I went out my way to ask that one yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so I applied to go uni in Manchester to do a data science master's there. so then data science was then on my head because I was like so I was like the, the gamble to do maths has paid off yeah data science and maths and machine PhD learning PhD wasn't in your head though at this stage no at all. I was like it's because I thought it was unattainable. I was like, fucking three years research. I don't. I, I didn't know as well then what research even was. And you were always thinking, tell me if I'm wrong, about getting back to work. I, I was I was thinking, money how, do I, how do I get a job that pays loads of money yeah, exactly. doing this? Is, so, because yeah. I was like, the skills I'm learning will put me ahead of people in the job market, which means I'll always have a job. Yeah. So I so I was like, right, data science master's, defo it. Applied too late or a combination of applied too late and I went to John Moores, so University of Manchester. Snobbity. Manchester University of Manchester fucked me off because I had a glowing recommendation for me and he wrote me like a two-page fucking masterpiece. The program leader. He was yeah. on here, Dr. Ian Malabar. At best grades in the year. Uh, academic, like awards throughout. And still denied. And he still fucked me off. Yeah. So it was, it was a combination of applying too late and So it's very John real. Moore's. Snobbery, like if, of course, it's like and Sheffield, you know, Manchester wasn't prepared to take a polytech kid with outstanding. And put it this grades. way, I've I've spoke to lecturers in other universities who've validated that. Who've yeah, said yeah. there is a snobbery around coming to Liverpool, John Moss, yeah, or other such unis of the like. It just, they just exist, yeah, yeah. And I've had that. I'm not going to give away names, so that'd be silly. But that's definitely been said. Um, yeah. So then I went into industry, yeah, yeah. and after a year in industry, I realised one. This isn't for me, or the especially the industry. I was like, I was like, nah. I need to be more. Basically, I need to be more focused on machine learning, that because that's what interests me. Because I was doing more like, um, business intelligence analytics yeah, and stuff. I and, and I was like, for those who don't know, that's just like building reports for a company, like, and so then they can understand. So it's more looking in the past rather than predictive. I was like, nah, that's not for me. And it was very from what you said, like, um, samey same. So, yeah, every same day. same but different everyday type thing. Yeah, like yeah. same day, uh, same thing. Different day. Different day. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the phrase. Uh, so then that's why I applied to do the masters at John Moore's. I was like, right, I need to get back in because there's utility in this. No, and, and I want to move into a company where I can do more of a ML role. Yeah, like prescriptive, like prediction type work. Yeah, yeah. Did the masters, and then when I got to the end of the masters, I worked with Sandra, my supervisor at the minute, to do my dissertation project. Yeah, mom. And then whilst doing that, she was kind of like, this is like what a PhD is, but for like three years. Yeah. And doing that, I was like, wow, this is good. Why don't I apply for a PhD? So you got onto the whole enjoyment of research at master's level. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, a PhD was never something I was aiming for. And then when I was doing it, I was like, and also I enjoyed working with my supervisory team who I worked with at master's level. Like that was brilliant working yeah. with them. So I was like, look, if I can just continue working with these for one, I was more just thinking, look, I get paid to stay at uni, brilliant. I'm working with people I want to work with, which yeah. is a big thing for and me. And you're really enjoying And I, And the work. it's exactly what I want to do in that it's working on this cutting edge stuff, yeah. like doing these proper hands on type of stuff. So then that's when a PhD for me came about. So again, I suppose the moral of the story is I, I, I was never aiming for a PhD, but I'm doing one. And did anyone ever ask when you're applying for your PhD? Why did you get two C's and a D? Oh yeah, no, no one gave a fuck. That's what I'm like. Did anyone? Did Sandra? Did Ivan? 
did anyone who you built a relationship with and a trust with academically say you're really good at this Ryan but actually I'm looking back at your chemistry AS and you've got a D nah because I think then it's it's one of them it's like when you when you get to college do people ask about your fucking year two sats that's well, that, or your well, year five sats when you're in sixth form no lads it's the end of the world or even at undergrad like if you do a bit of a shit first year if you get 80% in second year no one's worrying that you got third, first, 42 in, first year. in first year and it's like yeah so it, it's yeah, yeah uh, that's a that's a very 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 good point yeah is I that, to make that clear, if, if someone now genuinely dis- so like so now i'm confident in my in my ability to do the work yeah and like the, the kind of results since a level speak for themselves but if, if i went to somewhere now and they said to me we're not hiring you because you're a levels like, oh, i won't want to work for you anyway yeah what a fucking if you're yeah, if you're putting that much emphasis on something that happened when i was 18, 18 16, yeah, i'm yeah. now 27 28 by the time i'll be looking for a job that, that's what it's you're judging people based on it's something 10 years ago yeah. it's, it's not worth it so then when did so when did you want to do a phd sound because i know you you were i think you were like kind Earlier. of set on it weren't you yeah yeah i am um... As I say, I fell through every door because I just thought, didn't think about it much, even up until doing the maths degree. I didn't even know if I liked the maths that much, honestly. I was just doing it because I could do it. I was with my mate. I didn't want to go to work on a building site, so I ended up doing a maths degree. Um, got a first class degree at the end. Um, and it was one of the top in the year. It wasn't quite top in the year, like barely. I was in like the top five <laughs> in the year. Um, so everyone was like, fucking hell, well done, Sam, you know what I mean? You've done really well. It, like, I don't really come across as an intelligent person either. I'm quite, like, slow talking and, like, big and heifer, basically. <laughs> a big gangly... Just a big heifer. <laughs> gangly Sasquatch. <laughs> yeah, and, like, <laughs> and I surprised myself. I was like, fucking hell. But I'd done loads of work, like, unlike A-levels. I knew I was going to get it first. But it's like what people say. Some like People can have talent, man, but you've got to have the, the hard so work. Are, to and at A-levels, I knew I was clever. But at every result date, there'd be this big hope and pray for a good one. At, at, at university level, I'd done that much work. I was like, oh, I'm getting a first, you know. Like, I knew I was getting a first, lads. And by the time I was doing this, my dissertation, I'd got that many top first class marks. I've never, in an exam, except for one, at undergrad level, got a 2-1. And it was in Sandra's module. And the reason why I got it is because I'd already had a first. And it was already... Sort of. Just set up. So and you just the need... last two things to get marked was Sandra's machine and an exam, and me dissertation. I knew me dissertation was class, and I didn't do any revision. Because <laughs> <laughs> the lads, take your foot off I the was gas. on the beach all of a sudden. Lads, I had a first. Back on like, that beach, just yeah, chilling. I, like, I don't have to do. And then I got sixty-four. Well, that's still great. Yeah. It's still a good result. Lad. And I said to Sandra, like. She won't remember. I was like, sorry about you know what I mean. That was shy. And she was like, you got sixty four, but I was judging it on every other. Yeah, but then, but then as you say, everything changes relatively. Like so, you got two C's at A level, yeah. and you go, like but, I wasn't asked. And then your whole perspective changes when you go. Actually, I can fucking do this. That's it, lads. And talking about research, I, I knew I wanted to do it from undergrad. I was put with a supervisor called Evo, and we did a project on ecology. And as you say, I love animals. I've always loved the natural world. And we did, he looked at the red squirrel problem in the UK. Yeah. Um, which is looking at invasive species using mathematical modeling, um, predator prey models, they're called. And we like model species. Yeah. And I just loved it, lads. I was obsessed with it. Probably still my favourite project I've ever done. I yeah. I just loved yeah, it, yeah. lads. It's probably because it's my first as well. And um, got a boss mark. And as soon as I did that, when I was doing that process, same as Sandra. Evo said to me, like, you know, would you be interested in applying for a PhD with me on this problem? But rather than doing like a watered down, sanitized dissertation version. Yeah, like you've got, you've you've got, like got a, a, a month or two to get it done. Yeah, type and we were thing. like, we'll really look into the problem in the UK. We'll look at other invaders. There's like problems with ticks and um, airborne ticks in the UK and parasites that he was wanting to look into. Um, and I said, yeah, let's do it. And we applied and I didn't get it. Um, but again, that's very much a theme of applying for a PhD. And I didn't get it, lads, and I applied for about eight, and I didn't get any of them. Because that's what I mean, That that's what really stuck out to me when I met you at Masters, mm. was that you were like, yeah, you were always going for interviews and applying for PhDs. Yeah, lad, I just sort of got the bug, forgot I went to the University of Liverpool, met different people, um, but you know what it was, lad, I did love to research, but like, something went off in my head, lad, like, 
and I don't know whether it's because of my background or like coming from where I've come from, um, like I obviously didn't have the spawn talent or nothing, but like I think I just wanted that. I literally to this day, I still, and, I, and I come across this problem. I started a PhD, I probably shouldn't say this now. Supervisor, I go like, what the fuck? But like, I don't even know why I'm doing a PhD by the fact that I just want some sort of like respect in this world yeah. lad, and I want the doctor on my name but also it's you know also because I mean? you are good at the same time I'm good at it and I love it and you enjoy it but like for me for you like it seemed like you'd done the research and loved it I lo- I really did enjoy the research I've just told told you my love for it but I was always in the back of my head chasing something mate. No, but I, but I think chasing a title man you I know think we've mean? all got that in, in essence because I once you get a master's, you're still highly respected in your subject. But you're just chasing there's the next gotta be, thing. It's always just been the next page of yeah. the book. And I think that's both of us. We get to the end of it, and I'm like, what's the next page look like? Yeah, because then, then I'm like, well, I've done an undergrad, I've done a master's. Might as well do the next one. I, I may as well complete the book in, in, in terms it, of what what I can study. I may as well get there. And I, I was a bit like you. I wasn't as wedded to machine learning as you. I, I was happy to do modelling. Yeah. And I applied for modelling, like using actual... Um, calculus model, you know what I mean, ODEs and stuff. Um, apply for loads. Short, long story short, I ended up going for a machine learning one. The first machine learning one I went for. Um, I done a day science masters, so maybe that prepared me. So yeah. I went for a few modeling ones. I remember getting questions. If you why have you done a day science masters? If you wanting to do a heavily, like calculus PhD, yeah. and I was like, I don't know. Got one with a belt of <laughs> supervisor at University of Liverpool, um, Jennifer Down, and it's she's great and. Yeah, that's how I got there, lad. And no yeah. one ever asked me why. Yeah, I was just I about to ask you that then. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So then I think to because I think we've rabbited this on quite a bit. We covered yeah, quite man. a lot. So to summarise it up, like yeah, flopping your A levels is one thing, and it seems like the end of the world. But I think the whole point of why we wanted to talk today is that we were both in that position, and it's still got like where you wanted you, to go. Like just because you didn't get what you wanted at one stage, like just by flipping it round. I think putting the effort in and like actually attending and doing it, even Ian said that yeah. biggest predictor of is of performance is attendance. It doesn't mean it has to be the end of your like your academic journey. And, and fucking up at A level, I think prepared us better because if you fuck up at A, if you if you fuck up, if you make your mistakes at A level, it flips your psyche and you'll start working hard at uni. I seen loads of people who got to uni because they were naturally and gifted. Them. And I'd done hardly any work to get there. They were just sort of rolling through. So naturally, probably more intelligent than me and Belly. Got eight stars without trying. But then, because everything had come so easy, they got to the next level, which yeah. is university, and ended up with two ones or two twos or failed, or dropped out because yeah. it had hit them, and they had never failed before. So as soon as the first obstacle come... And that's the thing. I, I know people who had that same stumbling block week. Everyone runs into it at some point. Yeah, man. But I know people who've, who've who've had it in the third year of uni or at masters. Yeah. So they've just been that naturally clever. Do you get through, get to masters, and then they have that? Oh no. I'm done enough work. I finally got to a point where I can't just skate by, on being Bare minimum, naturally yeah, yeah, naturally yeah. kind of gifted. So, yeah, I think the idea of this is if we've kind of the point has been in there that you can. I think the idea is just don't don't give up, man. If, don't if give it's up. what you want to do, do, it's what you want to do. This is. I know we're just two people in a very big pond, but I think we're two very kind of separate examples of the same point. Yeah, yeah, for it's sure, like, man. That's why we wanted to do it because we had similar routes once we got to undergrad and we were like, bet there's loads of people who failed their A-levels and thinking yeah. what they would do. Man. Yeah, so these are just two very specific ways you can fuck your A-levels up. Yeah. But then once you get there, it's not the end of the world. And if you really no, want to do, if you really want to push on, man, there's plenty of ways ways to do it.